Paul Hill, I'm Team Thor, and this is Nerdist News. You're probably asking yourself, where's Jessica Chobot? And second, how cool are Spider-Man's friggin' eyes? Well, we'll get to both of those things in a second as we break down the insanely cool new Captain America Civil War trailer in unsettlingly specific detail. Oh, roll up your sleeves. I'm gonna say a lot of words wrong like that. Three seconds in and we get our first intriguing image. It's two rando soldier dudes with Russian flag armbands opening a very, very secure chamber with a Hydra symbol on the door. What's behind said door? Uh, Winter Soldier, a uh, duh. Dude loves chilling out in Soviet Hydra stations. All kidding aside though, the Russo brothers themselves have confirmed that we'll see flashbacks in Civil War and I'd guess this is one of them since it looks like Bucky hasn't gotten his red star yet. Perhaps it's a flashback to a time Bucky messed with one of the characters who will be hunting him down in the film? Based on the timeline, the two likeliest rumors would be either Howard Stark or Black Panther's dad, T'Chaka. Since Chadwick Boseman confirmed we won't go back to Wakanda in Civil War, maybe the elder Stark is more likely. Or maybe this flashback involves us learning that the Winter Soldier is being mind-controlled again. I mean, why else would he be straight up willing to shoot Tony Stark in the face? And after all, we still haven't seen the movie's main antagonist, Baron Zemo, played by Daniel Bruhl. The appearance of Captain America in what looks like the same or at at least a very similar location makes us think that maybe he and Bucky are on the hunt for some clues to the Winter Soldier's history. Is he trying to clear Buck's name, discover the roots of some secret Hydra plot? And who is that in cryo-freeze behind Cap? An army of Winter Soldiers controlled by Zemo? What? That's totally possible. Up next, the new Avengers are assembled before General Thunderbolt Ross, the coolest name in the comics, where they're given a stern talking to and told about the Sokovia Accords, the pro-superhero registration documents that are in response to the Sokovia incident from Age of Ultron. Also reference on this screen behind General Ross. But wait, where's War Machine and Vision? While the two showed up as Avengers at the end of Age of Ultron, neither of them are in this meeting, nor are they in the Crossbones action sequence that allegedly kicks off the film. Is there turbulence among Cap's new team before Civil War even starts? Or are they simply on a side mission of their own, where they'll be quickly swept into Team Iron Man? And speaking of that action sequence, it looks like Crossbones, whom we get a real good look at finally with his janky metal arm, has some kind of army, and they're assaulting an institute for infectious diseases in Africa, according to the signage. Could this be located in Wakanda? And could the body count of whatever Cap and his team get up to here be the real lead in to Black Panther's involvement in the story? And how about this explosion at this big meeting? A UN meeting, actually, as noted by the symbol on the podium. Where else have we seen this symbol? On the Sokovia Accords folder in General Ross's office. Anyway, back to the explosion. It seems to hit Wakandan Prince and current Black Panther T'Challa pretty hard as we see him bruised, bloodied, and out of costume. Is the Winter Soldier behind this attack, or is he framed for it? And does this scene lead directly onto the motorcycle chase in which Black Panther uses his awesome claws to pop the Winter Soldier's back wheel? These guys certainly seem to have some kind of sweet beef as we've now seen them fight in the tunnel and during the big airport brawl and on the rooftop where BP gets to show off his bulletproof vibranium suit. I wonder whether the person in that helicopter is firing at Bucky or T'Challa and whether that's the same chopper Cap was desperately clinging onto in the last trailer with his sweet super biceps. Now, for those of you who've read the Civil War comics, you know that a major plot point concerns Tony Stark building a prison in the negative zone for captured anti-registration superheroes awaiting their trials. Well, it looks like the Civil War movie will have some kind of parallel with the introduction of The Raft, lame name for a cool place, Marvel's supervillain island prison to the MCU. Will Cap and company get locked up there? Well, take a look at Tony Stark's black eye. We see it pop up a few times in the trailer, during the airport battle, during what seems to be the final one-on-one -on -one with him and Cap, so we would guess it doesn't appear until after the real fighting has started, meaning that this prison is likely somewhat of a brash last resort after things have gotten truly out of hand, or, counterpoint, maybe it's part of the resolution of the film, some kind of bargaining between the warring superhero sides. Perhaps instead of getting, you know, gunned down on his way to trial, Cap agrees to be imprisoned in this harsh-ass underwater jail circle. But back to that seeming final battle between Iron Man Cap and Winter Soldier. You know, the one where the two World War II buddies beat up brutally on old Shellhead. 
We got a few more good looks at the scene in this trailer, and it's loaded with hints at what could happen during Civil War's two and a half hour running time. There's this tank the trio is fighting near, which could hold another cryostasis victim inside, though it's hard to say who. Could this be another part of Cap and Bucky's hunt for the secrets of the Winter Soldier's past? And how about that line from Steve Rogers reaching all the way back to his childhood? I could do this all day. A callback to the first Avenger? Man. But come on, let's get to it. Let's talk about that big airport battle. The Russos have already told us that it's set at Flughafen Airport in Germany, but this sign confirms it if you thought they were like lying or something. And while we've seen this fight in the last trailer already, this time we're getting even more detail than ever. Want to see Hawkeye do some stuff? There you go. Want to see Ant-Man ride atop one of his freaking arrows? Of course you do. Here it is straight from the cover of the Avengers number 223. Want to see an incredible splash page come to life against a slightly underwhelmingly drab backdrop? You got it. Want to see a bunch of mysterious explosions that Black Widow watches from atop a hill of some kind? That's weirdly specific, but sure, there you go. Now here's a question we have about that actually. After Rhodey gets shot down, which we'll bring up again in a minute, we see the smoking ruins of the airport in the background as Tony Stark cradles his best bro. Now, in the first trailer, we saw Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch running from these explosions, but in this one, we see Black Widow watching in horror, so neither side necessarily caused it. So when I asked the question of who may have shot down Rhodey Rhodes, as he and Iron Man were presumably fleeing the airport, you may be left wondering, could it have been Baron Simo or some other evil third party that arrives on the scene? Well, without watching the movie, it's hard to say, but we can make some guesses based on the type of projectile that pierces Rhodey's armor. That is a yellow bolt of some kind of energy. And who can shoot those? Two characters that we've seen, Vision and Iron Man. Since both of these guys are fighting on the same team as War Machine, we have to wonder, what could possibly have happened here? Does Iron Man aim for a team cap member and miss? Is Vision somehow forced to go haywire and commit some friendly fire? We do see Scarlet Witch mess with him at one point, or does Ant-Man get into Tony Stark's suit and, and hack it in some way so that his targeting parameters go out of whack and, and hit? Uh, War Machine? Oh, oh, uh, tangent. Is that Hawkeye writhing around on the floor beneath Scarlet Witch? And why is she busting into Avengers Tower? So yeah, Iron Man may have shot Rhodey, Vision could have, or perhaps another character we just haven't seen in action yet did. However you cut it, things aren't looking good for James Rhodey Rhodes, who seems to be filling the comic book role of Goliath in this story, biting the dust to push this fight to the next level. Oh, finally, let's talk about Spiderman, y'all. <laughs> Yeah! While the web head only shows up for, like, literally a second, here are some observations. Yes, he's got mechanical eyes that open and close like irises that aren't technically anatomically correct for spiders. Hear that whirring? Hey, everyone. Sounds like pretty high tech for a high schooler. In fact, sounds pretty much like Iron Man to me. And since we've heard that Tony Stark builds a suit for Peter Parker after discovering him in a homemade suit that looks like underoos, we're guessing that that is it. And check out those sweet black outlines around his eyes. Classic Ditko look. We approve. Also, end the debate about whether Spidey will have mechanical or organic web shooters. It's mechanical, baby. Sweet mechanical. And what's left? A belt full of web cartridges, some modern MCU touches, like those pointed black lines in the eye. Honestly, it's just not enough texture for us. The suit looks a little flat as is, and we're pretty sure this is an entirely CG shot. Spend the money on your big reveal for a CG character. Come on now. So maybe we can count on seeing a little more detailed version with some added texture soon, but hey, great job on the eyes and the webs. So thick and webby. Seriously, the webs matter. And these are good webs. Gonna, when I get into the MCU, gonna, gonna have great webs. I got the best webs. Gonna make webs great again. Look at these web shooters. Normal si no pro there's no problem with these, the size of these shooters. Let me uh, assure you. <laughs> But what did you guys think of the trailer? Who is in those mysterious hydro cryo chambers? Who do you think kills Rhodes? Did the trailer sway you towards Team Cap or Team Iron Man? Or forget that, uh, we're all Team Spiderman now. Anyway, so, and speaking of Spidey, what did you think of the new suit? Look a little rubbery to you, kind of like a big Swedish fish? Or are you totally on board? Let's discuss. Oh, Spider-Man, why does he feel like he needs to hyphenate his name anyway? Superman is where it's at on today's Because Science. That's right, I'm breaking down the science of his heat vision and how long it would take to store up uh, even more powerful versions of this laser blast. 
Also, Jess, Dan, and Malik are all at South by Southwest. If you're there, make sure you hit them up at Banger Sausage House and Beer Garden for exclusive panels, games, and appearances from folks like Danny McBride, Tatiana Maslani, Gillian Jacobs, Scott Ackerman, the Silicon Valley cast, you know, cool chill bros like that. Check out all the details over at Nerdist.com, and don't forget to tweet right at Dan Casey's main Twitter account, Osteoferosis, how many dicks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Thanks for doing that to me. Last week, Dan, you're welcome.